straight to it. Let's pray right there. Father God, we're so grateful, so grateful we get the opportunity to come here and connect with your word, Lord God, with your presence, that at the mention of your name, everything that is in us will absolutely vanish, vanish. Everything that is not from you will absolutely disappear. And your word, Father, is just a solid foundation for us to build on. And tonight, I pray that our ears are ready to hear what you have to say, because Holy Spirit, you are the teacher of the church. Come now and teach us what we have to hear from you, Father, in every area. And also, let it sink into our hearts so that it transforms our lives. And Father, we pray for every church around the Inland Empire and around the world. And we bless them also, because we do not compete against churches. Father, we advance one kingdom and that's yours alone and so we declare that tonight in jesus name we pray we all say amen, amen. Oh, let me get my notes thank you <clears throat> that's awesome get your bibles get your bibles we're going to go to second kings um i'm going to go to second kings and and also the book of ecclesiastes right there so it's pretty much we're hanging around those areas uh for tonight but have you ever come across people who I don't know if they know you or not, but every time you ask them no matter what's going on, they say, hey, it's all good. It's all good. It's so interesting. Like, like, it could be bad or it could be good, but for them, it's always all good. And when I was working on these notes, when I was praying to say, God, what do you want? He just reminded that phrase to me, that it's all good. It's all good. Can you say that? One, two, three. It's all good. Right? So we have to declare that. Because if we don't declare that, a lot of times we get trapped into a bubble that doesn't allow us to see the good in a lot of situations. I come from a country that has no season changes. We were joking around in the back uh, with Dr. Fred and, and his wife. And so we were talking in the back and we were saying, hey, um, the California is weird. I turned off my air conditioner because it was, it was cold for a few nights. So I'm like, hey, let me turn it off. And today I get to the house and it's just like blazing hot. I'm like, make up your mind, you know? Um, but it, the weather is beautiful in California. We cannot complain. I mean, it's just so amazing. But a lot of times when you come from a place, I came from a country that has no changing seasons. It was in the, in the Caribbean it's called the Dominican Republic, and it shows a little island that doesn't change. It's either hot, humid, and mosquito, or hot, humid, and rain. Just two seasons, and so you can get either one. Enjoy yourself, right? Um, but, but it's really beautiful, but there's just no changes. So when I first came to the U.S., I went to a place called Illinois in Chicago. And so in that area of Chicago, I went to the city. I went to a town in Illinois. And so, and I went in April. So it wasn't like full on winter, but it was pretty cold for a guy who had never been in the cold, truly. And so it was just a change of mindset. And when I finally moved here, I remember talking to my wife and I'm like, I, I don't get this thing. I mean, like, I, I, I'm in the house and I'm hot and then I go out and then I'm cold. And she told me something. She said, you have to wear layers. I'm like, I don't know what that is. You just put a shirt and pants in my country. As long as you have that, you're good, right? Um, and so learning how to live through the seasons, it was very interesting. Learning the changes. And you know what? In our own spiritual life and in our own walk in life, seasons are very, very crucial. And for many of us, we tend to just kind of bundle all together. We live in a country that we want everything good all the time, all the time, because when things are good, it's good. That's awesome. We want that. And if something is bad, we want it to be short and quick and get it over with. And that's it. But let me tell you something. Something happened through the seasons of life that are very important for everything you do. And if you cannot identify what season you're on, it might come and go and you might miss it or you might hurt in the following season that comes upon you. And so tonight we want to learn from the Word of God, how do I walk through these seasons of life? How do I move on from one place to the other? And as I was praying, God led me to this verse in Ecclesiastes 7.14. Ecclesiastes 7.14 says the following. In the day of prosperity, be joyful. The first and the 15, glory to God. <laughs> Some of you guys on the end of the month, right? So on the, on, the, on the day of prosperity, you be joyful, you rejoice. But in the day of adversity, consider. So, so here, here's someone who wrote uh, Ecclesiastes saying, I want you to do something. When things are good, enjoy it. Have fun, rejoice. But when things are bad, don't go crazy. It says, I need you to think about something. Here's what he says. Surely God has appointed the one as well as the other so that men can, can find out nothing that will come after him. And another version says, these things come so that we don't guess what's happening in the future. And for a lot of people, this is really, really important because we want to know what's happening in the future, what's happening tomorrow, and we have to get it together, figuring it out. Lord, what is the next season in my life? And God keeps that connection so that we can connect with him as we walk through the seasons of life. 
and is very, very important for all of us. I don't care how young you are or how old you are, everybody's going through a transition, whether through a grade, whether through a hormonal transition, whether through an age situation, whatever it is, there's something happening in every level. And the Word of God has wisdom for us. And I talk to people all the time who can miss these things. I'm saying, you know what? You're not going through this. You're actually going through a season in your life. And if we don't evaluate those things, we forget to say to that season, it's all good. It's all good. We got to say to whatever season you're going through, it's all good. Because when you speak those words through it, you'll get to figure out what is the Lord doing? What does the Lord want for me? And in the book of Kings, there's a very interesting um, situation happening. Uh, Second Kings chapter 3. And in 2 Kings, it's amazing. Elisha has died, and um, Elijah has died or gone with the Lord, really. Uh, He was taken up into heaven. And so Elisha has taken over as the prophet of the land. And Elisha was an amazing, powerful man of God. He did just as he wanted, double of what Elijah did. Um, He just moved in an amazing way. And so Elisha is doing some amazing things right off the bat. He's making some amazing miracles. And we've heard a lot of these messages. But this one message captured my attention as I was studying. In 2 Kings 3, let me put you into what's happening. There's three kings that are going against the king of Moab. Moab was a powerful pagan nation. And you have two kings in what we, we all call it Israel, but really it was two kingdoms, Judah and Israel, the other tribes. So the king of Judah was a good guy, Jehoshaphat. That guy was from God. The king of Israel, he was the son of Ahab, bad guy, right? And so Ahab was terrible, and so his son wasn't as bad. The Bible said as bad as his dad, but he did some pretty bad things, right? So you have two of these guys, and you have the king of Edom who wasn't part of the kingdom, but he said, hey, let's go against this guy. This guy's declaring war against us, so we're going to get together. So Jehoshaphat said, hey, I'm going to support you. We're, we're blood. We're the tribe. So we're a part of the 12 tribe. We're going to roll with you, right? But really, there was no mix there. One wasn't following God. The other one was just, you know, was godly, and then the other one was just added to the war. So something is happening the season of their life where they're trying to make something where go through a situation. Now, Jehoshaphat is such a godly man. As they're going into war, they crawl through the desert. As they're going through the desert, obviously, they run out of water, they run out of food, and they're in bad shape. Like the army, the animals, everybody's about to die. And Jehoshaphat says something so important. He says, isn't there a man of God in the land that we may hear from the Lord? And my friends, there's a lot of people going through a desert in their life in a season, and they won't even bend the knee to say, is there a God I can hear from? Is there a message I can get from the Lord? Is there somewhere I can get the word of God in my life? And let me tell you, that is going to be crucial if you're going to be able to say, it's all good. I'm going to walk through the season of life. But it all begins when I realize there is a God who has direction for my life in this particular season I'm in. They were in a bad one. They were surrounded. They were going to war, and they had no idea what was going on. So uh, they go to one guy says, hey, yeah, there's a guy named Elisha. He is the man of God in this land. Let's go visit him. So Jehoshaphat said, let's go. So all three kings go with their messengers, and Elisha was, was straight, I mean, straight shooter. Elisha said, hey, what are you guys doing here? Oh, man, they're going to kill us. The king of Israel is like, this guy's going to kill us. This is terrible. They're going to grab all three kings and kill us all. Moab Moab is such a big nation. And Elisha said, I don't want to hear from you. You're a pagan, dude. Get out of my sight. If it wasn't for Jehoshaphat, who's a God-seeking man, I don't want to see your face. And this is why this is so crucial, guys. We live in a society today that continues to push God out of the picture. And God is saying, unless you invite me in the picture, I want nothing to do with your problem. You made that mess. You made that mess. And for all of us, we got to say, we got to open our eyes and go, in this season of my life, I got to invite God into my situation. And that is exactly what Jehoshaphat is doing. Jehoshaphat is saying, I need God. We need to hear from God for a particular situation. And here's the answer. So, um... So, man, I left my glasses. Let me enlarge the screen. (laughs) Technology. Okay, 2 Kings 3 says, verse 14, And Elisha said, As the Lord who lives before whom I stand, surely were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, I would not look at you nor see you. Whoa. 
Like Elisha's like, I don't want to hear from you guys, but this guy, he, he's into God. He is after God. And let me tell you, my friends, whatever season you're going through, there's always, it's always important to have a God-seeking and fearing friend. Always. Somebody you can call on the phone. Somebody can tell it's going to be good. We're going to call in the name of Jesus. I'm going to pray for you. You're going to pray for me. We're going to walk together. Hey, let's go to church together. Let's, meet, let's, let's read the Word of God. That, my friends, is so important because God-fearing people lead you closer to God. What tends to happen is we tend to call the worst people in the world. The guy who's at work who just, you know, came up being drunk and going to bed at three and, hey, man, I'm going through this in, in my life. Leave that woman. Don't worry about it, man. There's so many girls out here. I don't know why you're concerned. So, hello? Like, that's the wrong guy to talk to, right? And so it's very important for us to see that God-fearing man will tell you, hey, man, this is what the Word of God says. We're learning about it. Ephesians 5, this is what the Word of God, he will lead you back to the things you have to do in order to walk with God in whatever season you're on. Very, very, very important. And so the Bible continues saying, verse 15, but now bring me a musician that it happened and says, so, so Elisha is inviting somebody to worship as he wants to hear from God, that the Lord came upon him, verse 16, and he said, thus says the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. This is so important because all of a the sudden, they're in the middle of the desert, and Elisha said, I want you to start digging holes in the middle of the desert, right? A lot of times the instructions of God may seem a little odd for what you're doing. I mean, I know I've been part of some odd instructions of the Lord, but I believe there's a blessing behind it. Are you with me today? Very, very important. And so it says, hey, start digging. Verse 17, for thus says the Lord, you shall not see wind, nor shall you, nor shall you see rain, yet the valley shall be filled with water. If I can translate it in today's terms, my friends, don't follow your feelings to obey God. That's it. As simple as that. Elijah said, you ain't going to see no rain, no big old cloud, no, no, you know, none of that. But I'm going to tell you, there's going to be water here. And when we get a word of God that's for the season we're in, we just got to see what the Lord is doing in that process. Are you with me today? So important. So, so it says, so that your cattle and your animals may drink. Verse 18. And this is a simple matter, oh man, in the sight of the Lord. I love this guy. He also delivered the Moabites, and he will also deliver the Moabites into your hand. Verse 19, also you shall attack every fortified city. And then he goes on, I won't read the whole thing. And then he goes on and says, you're going to destroy these guys. And so what does that got to do with the seasons of our life? I believe God gave through Elisha, these guys, something that I've been wanting to do in my own life, and I've done a certain thing. And there are three aspects, three aspects that I want you to consider tonight as you're going through whatever season in your life you're in. And so I want you to consider this. I want to answer this phrase. To thrive in every season, to thrive in every season, I want you to have three things the Lord is saying to so Number one, build expectation. You have to build expectation into your life in order to thrive in every season because a lot of times we have to dream. And dreaming is important at every stage. It is why we watch the Weather Channel. Yeah, it is why we check the weather app, right? We get on it and we see what's going to happen. Here's what that does. It puts us in a mindset of understanding what's happening so we can make adjustment as we're going through it. And dreaming is very important. I want you to build expectation. Whatever that season is in your life, is it your job, is it your family, is it your wife, is it your children, whatever it may be, unless you build expectation, you can get into a routine. I get up, I brush my teeth, I go to work, I come home, I turn on the TV, I eat dinner, I go to bed. Nobody say amen, because <laughs> got to pray for that, right? But it can become that. It can become that in our life. We just get into this cycle, and so there's no process in the season that we're in. And so many times we can say, man, this season is terrible. This is, this is horrible. But you have to build expectation for the next season of your life. You have to build expectation for what is happening as you're going through the process of your life. This is so, so crucial. Whatever it may be, as a matter of fact, a pastor was preaching us today in the back about faith. You have to build faith. Whatever it may be, put a decoration on your fridge, uh, put whatever you need to be. I heard of a lady who was single used to put a pair of men's pants empty by her bed saying one day those are going to be filled and they got filled glory to your god yeah i did hear that you have to build faith you have to build faith and so so important that uh, whatever it is i don't know what your stage is but build faith ladies i'm not sure that worked but if it works let me know we'll share the testimony <clears throat> so then it says that the king went ahead and consulted with god 
And I'll repeat. Uh, I'll look at this. Look at this. Verse 16 says, This is what the Lord says. I will fill this valley with pools of water. In the NIV, with pools of water. They're, they're looking at a desert. They're saying, I'm telling you that one day in this desert you're in, there'll be water flowing more than you need. My friends, we have to build a dream in order to go through a season of our life. Because if we don't, then it becomes all dark and we can't say it's all good because everything we're looking at is telling us it's all bad. Are you with me? It's all dark. It's all confusing. But if you build a process in it, if you say it's going to be good, the Lord is doing something in you. That's what the Lord did. Through Elijah said, hey, guys, don't worry about it. I want you to do something. I want you to build expectation. By tomorrow, there'll be water everywhere. Look at this. This is what the Lord says. You will see neither wind nor rain, yet this valley will be filled with water, and you and your cattle and your other animals will drink. This is easy thing in the eyes of the Lord. That to me is the greatest thing that I've read. He said, this is simple. This is simple. I think we get so complicated in our own dreams and our process. The Lord says, this is simple, guys. All you have to do is believe, and I am in operation over your life in whatever season you're in of your life. And this is so crucial for us to get into our life. Give God a hand if you're going to do it. It's very important. Because the Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So, so basically saying, the way I look at this, the way I'm dreaming the situation, that's how I'm going to look at the situation. Because there is a process in all this. There's a timing for everything we do. We've already read it many times. But, um, because yes, it's 3.1. 3.1 says this. says, to everything there's a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. So let me tell you, my friend, it doesn't matter what you're going through. There is a time for that to end. And there's something else beginning in your life in some way or another. And so we have to look at life that way because it becomes so dark. And for whatever reason, in America, it becomes even darker because we're used to good times. And so we're thinking, it's always going to be an economy high. It's always going to be houses, cars, and this. And the Lord is saying, there is a process to this, a process of maturity in it. So you build expectation for whatever is coming your way. And the good thing about people in God is that the Word of God says that those who are planted in the house of God, their roots will grow and their tree will see no dry season ever, ever. In the book of Psalms, this is so powerful. God builds an expectation in us. I remember... um, when my wife was pregnant, it was our third child. Um, it was so, so amazing. I've never seen this. I heard ladies that are having babies, there's a, something called nesting. I believe it is called nesting. All I know is, is about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, my wife is saying, hey, her water broke already early in the morning. We're going to have the baby. And she decided to wash every single piece of clothing in the entire house. I mean, the mountain of clothes was unbelievable. She dried it and folded it, and I'm like, but you're about to have a baby. I mean, literally, she's holding on to the dresser and folding the, I'm thinking, this lady's crazy. That baby's going to pop right there. I don't know what to do or no. But there was something in her saying, I'm getting ready for something. And you know what? This is the second thing I want you to know, going through every season to thrive, that expectation has to be or should lead you to preparation. Expectations should lead you to preparation. See, a lot of people have a lot of dreams, but do very little about it. Very little. My wife had a dream. I'm having a baby. And for that baby to come to a safe home, I'm going to make sure it's prepared. I'm going to make sure it's done. I'm going to work around it. I'm going to do something. And my friends, all of us were in a particular season. You don't know what the Lord is doing in that season. If you're doing great, just like Claire says, be joyful. Prepare. If you're in a financial uh, wealth right now, then plan your retirement. Make some good investments. Figure something out with your money. If you're in a financial drought right now, then look at what's happening, what's costing it. How do I get better? next time the season changes are you with me but a lot of people just dream and make no preparations for it I was having a conversation with a ministry friend the other day my wife and I went and said hey we want to talk to you because we have these ideas in our head and he's he's done it before and I said can you talk to me about it he said well do you have the money now I said not at all but you know what I do have I believe God has a plan for me to do this so you go ahead and tell I was taking notes I was like I don't have it yet but I am working on something because I'm building something the Lord is speaking to me are you with me and it's very very important that we do that a lot of people just stay in the dream stage and do not build in that process because dreaming is very important but preparation is what makes it happen in the season of our life see the man had to dig ditches in order for the water to flow in the desert 
the women that needed provision had to grab the vases for the oil to flow. The disciples had to break the bread and give it away for Jesus to multiply it. See, it's not just a dream and a word. There is an action for it. For it. There's an action for it. And we have to work at that. 2 Kings 3.20. 2 Kings 3.20. Look what it says. Now it happened. Can you say that with me? One, two, three. Now it happened. Oh, all of a sudden, these guys are digging ditches, working. It says, now it happened in the morning. But look when it happened. When the grain offering was what? Offer, past tense. These guys did something, my friends. Okay, the Lord says there'll be water, and he wants us to dig. I'm digging. I'm going to go on with what I need to do. I'm going to give my grain offering. I'm going to make the hole that the Lord wants me to make. And he is in charge of doing what he says he's going to do in your life. And that is so important. I don't know what season you're in, but that is something we have to do. Because why, why, why? That suddenly, suddenly, suddenly can happen. You get that phone call. You weren't expecting them. All of a sudden they say, hey, you know what? We're considering you for a supervisor position. What? I've been studying about that. Amen. Right? Like, like suddenly, suddenly it happens. Suddenly you've been, you've been, you know, calling, cold, making cold calls, calling leads, doing this. Nothing's happening. All of a sudden, one guy calls you and offers you, you know, a big old job. All of a sudden, all of a sudden. But you were, in those months, in those days, you were dialing away, my friend. You were getting leads. Are you with me? You were working on it. And so don't just dream because that expectation needs to bring certain preparation. These guys went at it. They went in the morning. They dug. They did their process. They did the offering. And suddenly water came by by the way of Eden, and all of a sudden, the water was right upon them. And it's very important for us to do that. I heard of a story of an emperor in China who wanted a certain painting of a bird, and he hired one famous, famous, famous painter in China. This emperor was waiting for his painting, and so as he waited for the painting, months and months and then years went by. Finally, this emperor got so mad and so angry, he took all, he took part of his army and rolled up in the house of the painter and said, I'm the emperor and you have not delivered my painting. I want my painting now. And it says that the artist grabbed a blank canvas, put it in front, and within one hour painted one of the most beautiful birds painting that has ever been seen till that day. In one hour. And the emperor says, what in the world took you so long if you could do the painting in an hour? And so the guy says, come here, emperor, and goes to his studio. And his studio has a stack of sketches of every different part of the bird. And, and he has the head, the feathers, the tail, the feet, everything, one by one. He says, you know what? It took me all these years of research to paint that in one hour. My friends, a lot of people dream. But you have to understand that when you do research, when you're working on something, you may be painting a feather of your future. You may be painting the feet of your future. You may be painting the eye of your future. The whole bird is not into play yet. But you're painting on something. That's so important. You're renting today and you're dreaming to own your home. That rental may be teaching you how to take care of a house. It is someone else's house, but maybe you're taking care of it. You're paying your payments sometimes. You're doing something that when you own your house, the bank can roll up on you and take it from you if you don't do what you're supposed to do. So that rental is teaching you something. That rental is teaching you something. You might be in the job today and you're kind of the low guy and you someday want to go up there. Maybe you want to watch what that guy's doing. Do what is right. Don't do what is wrong and grow in your position. But people, man, we live in a country that sells dreams with very little work, especially in social media today. Everybody has a picture next to someone else's Lamborghini because it's not theirs. It's probably the neighbors and they just selfie it and they just live in Colton. I don't know. Whatever. If you live in Colton, I don't want to insult you. That was terrible. And you kite it next to me. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> and so it's so important that we see that because in today's day, everybody's into this flashy thing, but no one tells you the process to that. And the Lord is saying, whatever season you're in, you're working on something. So don't see it as you're not doing anything. You are working on something. You're doing something important right now in whatever you're doing. As a raising children, man, you're building the future somehow, some way. Your children are going to do something great. If it's in a job, you're doing something great in that job. Whatever may be, wherever the Lord may lead you, you have to see it. It's in your health. You might be doing something small. It's complicated. You have ups and downs. I know I do. But you know what? I'm building something. You're painting an area, and one day the whole picture will come into fruition. Absolutely beautiful in your life. And it's very important for that. <laughs> Philippians 4, 13 says the following. I love, you know it, 
But when I studied, it was very interesting. It says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do how many things? All. all things. You know what? It's so interesting. When I started studying this verse a little more, the word I can do, it's one word in Greek, and it actually means to do something powerful. To do, so basically what you're saying is, I have power to do anything because Christ gives it to me. I have power to go through any season of life because he gives it to me. As a matter of fact, if you read the previous verse too that Paul's talking about seasons, Paul's saying, when I'm doing good, I praise the Lord. I've been through bad. I've been through ups and I've been through down. I've been through abundance and I've been through lack. I've been hunger and I've been filled. But in all of them, Christ has given me the power to get through it, my friend. He has in every area of my life. And I want you to know that that is the God we serve, that we have to get a picture of our heads like, Lord, this is a season of my life. This is just a season. And so it's very important for us to do that. Um, you know, you always hear all the teenager jokes, you know, like, oh, my gosh, going to a teenage year because it is difficult. The kids are changing all these things. But you know what? It is just a season. Just a season. Later on, it'll be amazing. I remember. I remember when the kids were little, I felt no one needed me at the house. They were just about mom. It was all mom, mom this. I couldn't connect when they were little. But as they grew, it was such a beautiful thing because now I was able to connect with my kids in a different way. And I'm enjoying them a ton, right? Um, because back then, I was like, well, they just want mom. And so I felt for a moment, but it was just a season. When the season changed, it became fun. It became great to be with my kids and do certain things. That'll be your, your gig, too. As a matter of fact, my wife and I were laughing, coming. She's like, oh, my gosh, honey, we're just 10 years away from empty nester season. And she's mentioned that several times. I'm like, are you afraid? You're like, oh, my gosh, in 10 years, I'm going to be alone with this grumpy old man in my house, and I don't want that. I want my kids around. I was like, you need prayer, girl. I don't know. Just, just kidding. <clears throat> To thrive in every season, you're going to have to do one more thing. One more thing. Can I give you one more tonight? You're going to have to pause for enjoyment. Pause for enjoyment. Man, I, I think we're in such a go-fast society. is crazy. I mean, we're just in go, 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 go. But there are times you have to pause for enjoyment. You just have to push the button and enjoy whatever is happening at the moment. This is so crucial. I, the Lord had to tell that to me just recently. After many years of not being able to purchase a home, my wife and I finally were able to put some money together and we bought a home this year, um, early this year. And it was, you know, a great victory in our life. But you know what? It's so terrible. If within a few weeks of moving in, I was already looking at prices in the market within the house and saying, oh, we didn't get a good deal. We didn't get a good deal. And I'm going crazy. And Lord saying, what are you doing? Like, enjoy what's there, right? Am I the only one who buys something and then checks it again, right? Or you buy a car and you're like, let me see truecar.com and man, I pay too much. I'm going back, right? Like you don't enjoy, you're frustrated. Like you want to make sure you got the best deal in the world and everybody else is suffering but you, right? That's what you want. Let's be honest with it, right? That's what you want. Um, but sometimes we just have to pause and enjoy whatever you have, whether it's a job, children, provision, just pause and enjoy. You say, it's good today, man. It's all good. It's all good. It was a hard day yesterday. Tomorrow, show up and go, it's all good today. It's a new day. The Lord is acting. Suddenly something good is going to happen. You have to push pause and enjoy whatever is happening in your life. Because if you don't, it'll go right by you. And you would not know what happened in that season of life. I know I've heard this saying about kids. And I'm talking about kids. We're in that state of our life where I believe they say that the days are long, but the years are short. The days are long, but the years are short. It's like with the kids, you feel like, oh my gosh, when is nighttime to put these kids in the room, right? But then years go by and they're not home and you're like, wow, that went really fast. That went really fast. We're looking at pictures with our neighbors who are still friends with our children and we found some of the birthday and we're like, oh my gosh, look at this kid and look at this kid. It's amazing. And we, right? And something happened. You realize, wow, they got big. That could happen in your own life. You could say, oh my gosh, look what the Lord has done up to now. Why don't you enjoy that? Why don't you enjoy that? Whatever the Lord has done so far has been good. Why don't you enjoy the fact that, man, you know what? I have some issues at work, but I have a job. And you know what, Lord? I'm going to thank you for that. That's really crucial. Why don't you thank the Lord for health? 
Because right now, you don't have to take medicine. You're walking straight. Things are good. Just say, Lord, thank you. Thank you for that, right? And if they change your medication, you say, Lord, this is for something else. But you took that other one away. Thank you for that, right? Whatever it is, just find enjoyment in it. Just pause and say, something is changing, and I'm okay with that. I'm going to welcome that in my own life. In the book of Matthew, it's so interesting, chapter 9 um, People came to complain about Jesus about something interesting. Look at this. Matthew 9, 14 says, Then the disciples of John came to him saying, um, also some of the Pharisees were there, saying this, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast, meaning they stop eating, fast often, but your disciples do not fast? Can you hear a grumpy person come in and talk to you right there? Right, right? Like, like raining on your parade. How come I have to do that and you didn't have to? Wait a minute, how come I'm being asked to do that, but you get a pass on that? Well, I'm sorry, I go to church and I pray to Jesus. I don't know, whatever you want to answer, right? Um, But there's a lot of people who are like, absolutely just can't handle your blessing. That's not your problem, that's their problem. And that's exactly what Jesus says. Look at the next verse, verse 15. And Jesus said to them, can the friends of the bridegroom mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them, and then they will fast. I love that. Who could Jesus say? Hey, man, I'm here. Things are good. We're going to have some fun. Sorry about John and sorry about the Pharisees, but as long as they have me, it's a good party. So we're going to enjoy it. But then he says, there'll be another season for these guys where I'm not around. And in that season, they'll have to struggle and push through it. Here's what Jesus is saying. There's a season for everything. That's what he's saying. So in this one that we're in, we're going to enjoy. We're not going to fast. We're going to eat some fish. We're going to have some fun. We're going to multiply bread till our stomach hurts. We're going to do some amazing miracles. Jesus was like, we're going to enjoy ourselves in the process. But there'll come a time where things get hard. Here's what Jesus is saying. If it's good, enjoy it. If you're low, then meditate on it. Consider whatever is happening in your life. But just believe in the process of God. I love the same verse I started with in the message translation. Look what it says. Ecclesiastes 7, 14 says, On a good day, enjoy yourself. On a good day, enjoy yourself. On a bad day, examine your conscience. On a bad day, examine your conscience. God arranges for both kinds of days so that we won't take anything for granted. My friends, I don't know what's going on in your life. I don't know if you're in a good day and you're celebrating, or I don't know if you're in a bad day. Don't get mopey. Just consider where you're at because both things, God is involved in it, and he wants to get you through it. But to thrive in every season of life, you're going to have to build expectations, start dreaming. You're going to have to work in preparation. I don't know what's happening next, but I'm going to do something while I'm waiting here. And when it comes your way, then you need to enjoy it. You push pause and you say, thank you, Lord. I'm so grateful you're doing these things in my life. I'm so grateful you're working in my life and doing a miracle in every area of my life. Because if not, it's going to be hard for us to say, it's all good. But when it's all good, go ahead and confess it because Jesus is involved in it. If he spoke to you, give him a hand tonight. Amen. This is so crucial that we get that into our life, into our system. Let's pray real quick. Father God, I just thank you so much. I don't know where these are your children, Lord. So I ask today that you will show us whatever season we're in, that you give your kids, your children, your sons and daughters a plan to get through it, Lord God, that we can thrive no matter where we're going right now because we're your children and we're reflecting your kingdom and your goodness. So I declare that today by the mighty name of Jesus in every one of us.